From the iHeart Radio studios in New York City, come two diehard fans of the greatest rock and roll band hailing from Hollywood, California. Dissecting all things Guns N' Roses and anything else in their distorted minds, it's Brando and Scotto. Because you know what the fuck you are! And this is Appetite for Distortion. Try it again! Welcome to the podcast. Is my mic not completely on? No, it just doesn't sound as I loud know, it, as it, the uh, intro. I know, it didn't. It's been a month, <laughs> so I think that's why. Uh, I, I forgot how to use uh, our, our microphone in, in, in a radio studio. What am I doing here? Appetite for distortion. Uh, what is this? Episode 19. You know, so you always go, what is this? And I never remember. I have no idea. I know. It's been a while. <laughs> Ian, you're still my co-host. Yeah, it's, it's I probably haven't been on the show in well over a month. Yeah, what happened? Just been busy, man. Well, no, as fine. you know, I no, I, you don't love me anymore. It's fine. I uh, I you know quit my job at SiriusXM. <gasps> I knew that full time. Yeah, full time at Hurricane Group during Software Radio, and uh, still doing this. And now I've, I'll actually have time to do this because for a while I I just had no time to spare. Now I have a lot of time to spare, which is great, and and full time with the full time podcaster. It's kind of cool. I never thought that would. Happen. <laughs> How is that an actual? Thing? I know. That's... Like I almost feel like if I have to go somewhere and you write on your application like podcast, or you know you go to the doctors or something, the occupation podcaster because it's not technically radio. It sounds like a lie. Like you have a girlfriend in Canada. Like yeah, one of the things yeah. that you just make up. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? Yeah, I do. I like that. <laughs> we'll get to Jim Rotolo in a, in a second. And the sad thing is, I actually had an ex, uh, a girlfriend in Canada. That's so right. That's You've cool. talked about that on the show. Yes, because I saw Guns N' Roses in Ottawa, Jim. That's why. oh, nice. Yeah, this isn't a, a Love Line show that you once worked on. <laughs> Uh, but no, this is uh, we're we're excited to be back. Thank you for everyone who's been keeping in touch with us on uh, Twitter and Facebook at the AFD Show. Of course, uh, we are now on iHeartRadio. You can maybe you you're a new listener who've heard our uh, promo, our commercial uh, running through uh, the streamage. Is that a word? I guess made it up on uh, all the iHeart um, apps. So so thank you for that. And uh, voiced by the lovely Brittany Forgione. Yes. And today, as we're recording this, and I have to hit up uh, Mitch LaFon, who is now on uh, Podcast One, Jericho's uh, yeah. network, right? Because uh, I even noticed this, because a lot of times when um, when I'm looking for stuff to post and tweet, I, I go to, like, this day in history, this day in Guns N' Roses history, but Mitch beat me to it. So as we're recording this, May 7th of last year, iconic singer Axl Rose make his, makes his a triumphant debut uh, for ACDC in uh, Lisbon, right? And it was glorious. Wow. So that's uh it's a year ago. And which is only a month after the debut with current Guns N' Roses. I know. That we've discussed that at length uh that uh our first reaction to hearing ACDC and you know I saw them in concert you better go next time. So but I do want to mention on all of J- uh Mitch's tweets that seems to be gaining the most reaction, most retweets, most favorites. So there is a demand there for more Axel DC. So that's to come. And also, just announced yesterday as we're recording this, Guns N' Roses and The Who, uh, they're doing some dates, uh, was in South America, I believe. It's it's not in, you can, don't, don't like turn away from the mic and go, <coughs> No, 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 I, I, didn't, I, didn't wanna, I didn't want to do it right on the mic. But know, yeah. That was such a dainty cough. <coughs> if you're going to cough, be a man about it. <laughs> so they're doing, uh, that's that's pretty shocking. I mean, yeah. I'm waking up to that news, Guns N' Roses and The Who, I mean, I can only hope they're going to do that in America. Interesting stuff. Wow, that's a great uh, commentary. <laughs> this is a great back and forth. Thank we'll you. see it. We'll see if it happens. Uh, what else is going on in the Guns N' Roses world? Uh, DJ Ashba. He's putting out water as I'm choking on water. Yeah, that's um, what's the market for for that? Is he going to sell it to uh, Nightmare Before Christmas cosplayers? Is like specific kind of water? Or it might, it might be on his website because he has Ashba swag. He sells shirts and well, all different types of stuff. Good luck to DJ with his water. I mean, he, he's doing it. Uh, Bumblefoot, despite rejecting us for an interview, that happened, Jim. Oh, wow. I, I forgot to bring it. I, I, I've i interviewed Bumblefoot twice. Right. Super nice guy. We reached out to him, said he didn't want to talk about Guns N' Roses, was appreciative, though. And then all of a sudden, he's doing all these interviews that are going viral. We're not going viral. He, I want to go viral. I, I do think it's because we're a Guns N' Roses podcast, though. And his whole thing is like, I don't want to talk about that. It's in the past. So I think they kind of massage 
him to get into the GNR stuff, even though he says he doesn't like to talk about it. I guess. I, I get it. You My know. feelings are still hurt, though. And yeah. I'm legit. I'm like, he just doesn't, oh, as, I've, as I've said, he doesn't seem like he's like proud to have been in Guns N' Roses almost. But Well... well uh, hope maybe for the next episode we got to get Russ TCB on from uh, my GNR because we need Back to do on. part two yeah. about Bumblefoot. But uh, we should probably should get to the yes because uh, uh, you're kill talking the about this guy named Jim and they don't they might not know who it is even though they should. We're gonna get so, there. We're doing our intro, you son of a bitch. It's been a month. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so Jim Rattolo is in studio, host of the Wild and the Innocent on E Street Radio, which you may have heard on Sirius XM twenty. Uh, from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Fridays, also a host at WDHA 105.5 in New Jersey, and the manager of Tenton Mojo, TentonMojo.com. I mean, that's a lot of different stuff. I'm busy. And uh, I've known Jim from SiriusXM for many years at this point, and prior to the Guns N' Roses reunion and the speculation happening, Jim was just one of those guys where we'd be talking in the kitchen in between while he was doing shows and I was working there, asking like is this really going to happen are we really going to see a GNR reunion and the thing with you that I know is uh much like myself and and Brando you were still going to shows during the Axel and Friends era as we know it yes. and and you always enjoyed them I mean I, I did, they're yeah. great shows yeah one thing about me is I, if I like your band I'm in it for life I'm loyal you know I know bands evolve over time and sometimes that evolution involves different members in it but you know, if you're making great music, you're making great music, and and that's I was always a Guns N' Roses fan from day one, and despite any lineup change, I was I was with those guys all the way. You know, I, I don't think we've ever talked it uh, talked about it, but did you like Chinese Democracy? What were your feelings on the album? I I <laughs> I'm one of the big supporters of Chinese Same, yeah. Democracy. I I'm, think we have the only three in the room. There, this is it. Like. I knew there was a bunch of us. We were like on a misfit island somewhere. <laughs> but but I am a huge supporter of Chinese Democracy, and I remember just even back in the you know in the late '90s or even early 2000s when the band was out touring and they were doing those rock and rios, right. and they would play a couple of those you know songs. They would play in Chinese Democracy, I think. At, at those shows and I couldn't wait to like you know illegally download the bootleg <laughs> sure. you know and I had like five versions of, of that song from different concerts yeah me too I had a couple of versions of um, maybe the blues which the was, blues right. which that is was now it. Street of Dreams. Dreams yeah Street of Dreams I was trying to think of that I call it the blues I know I, got I a, can't I, change it the Street of I Dreams I got emotionally attached to that title the blues yeah. so yeah I'm totally with you on that one so I, I was super excited about it I even liked and, I, and, I, and this kind of this song got completely stepped over and just disappeared hmm. was the uh, from the end of days soundtrack oh my god yeah. oh my god sure that got just completely we talk about that a lot you know it was there and it was and it was gone and the funny thing is there's a song out right now you know the pretty reckless yeah yes great band right so there's this, their current single uh, that we play on Q, on um WDHA is uh, called oh my god sounds somewhat similar I haven't heard that. I feel like now we have to pull it up and, and hear what that sounds like. I think like. we need to. So you talked amongst yourselves <laughs> while I make that happen. Like the like the chorus part when when she gets to the chorus. Okay. It's, yeah, well, it I'm... reminds me of of G and R's version of it. And her band did pour with the Axel and Friends lineup of Guns N' Roses at, at one point. I know right. they did some shows. So it make it would make sense, you know, that that would be the case. Um, I have no problem with that. I mean, we've also talked about because uh, you're obviously into the classic rock, working on uh, Bruce's channel and yep. working for DHA. But the newer music, with their bands like the Pretty Reckless or Avenged Sevenfold, who also get uh, likened to Guns N' Roses, Metallica. I mean, the influences are going to be there. Sure, sure. The band's been around since you know since the '80s, so you know the second, third generations of musicians coming up are going to be influenced by that. So I'd like to that's think you their, know it's blatant. Though. That's their classic rock. You yeah. know, I mean, Guns. I mean, I you know, I shudder when I have to refer to Guns N' Roses as a classic rock band. But it, like, I cried are. when Green Day started being a classic rock band. <laughs> All right, I remember jumping up and down on the basket case on my bed like Bill and Ted style. Excellent. I think even now. crazier is now and again on VH1 Classic, which is now MTV Classic. You'll see Corn Freak on a leash. Yes. Yes, I mean, that really Amazing. does not feel that long ago. Unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievable. But uh, but yeah, I I'm a huge fan of Chinese Democracy, and I, I can remember the night it was released. The local radio station in New York at the time played the entire album straight through right at midnight. Yes, K Rock, and K-Rock I, I stayed up and I, and I listened to the whole thing. I was driving around Manhattan. I was I, I live in Jersey, but I was I was driving. I was 
out somewhere, and I was with, and I was in the car, and I was like, I didn't want to go home. I just, I just drove around Lower Manhattan. It was so cool, listening and, to it. And Q, uh, right down the hall here, I remember they played uh, the, the title track at the top of every hour, and they had it pinned to their website. Oh, so, and cool. I, I was at a, a non-radio job at the time, and I just kept listening to the title track over and over and over again. Not a whole album, mm-hmm. just the song that I haven't heard Axel's voice in, in so long. But what shows did you go to? Both uh, original, uh, if you have, and I guess new Axel or new. Or I was the new at, version of it. At the I time. was at uh, Guns N' Roses Metallica show at at the what? at the uh, the Meadowlands. I was at that one. That, well, that was that's infamous. That was uh that was infamous. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not the infamous show, right? Where where. Uh... Metallica, you know, there was the James Hatfield getting burned. And no, all that. that's, that's my but, uh, but it was that's that tour. Yeah. yeah, it was that tour. That was everybody. Do you know? I don't know. The how way to San Jose, sorry. <laughs> there was. I have Tourette's. There was rumors about this, and I'm not 100% sure it was true. So Soundgarden was the opening band on that bill, mm. if I remember correctly. It was supposed to be Nirvana. Okay. On that on that tour. So it was supposed to be Nirvana, Talk about a Metallica, bill. and Guns N' Roses. And I think the world would have ended. I think. And, I, and I think why that didn't work out was because of that whole incident with Axel and Courtney Love and, and him basically. Do you ever hear this story? What, the one at the MTV Awards? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's and I Hi, think, Axel. Hi, Axel. Where's Axel? Hi, Axel. Hi, Axel. And then years later, last year, Dave Grohl gave uh, Axel his his chair. So yeah. every, everything has come. Everything full kind of smooths over in, in the <laughs> rock and roll world. But that, but yeah, Nirvana was supposed to be, I believe, the the opening act for that tour. But I did see that tour. That was quite amazing. And then, of course, there was the hiatus throughout most of the, you know, the nineties. I'm bringing up, uh, by the way. Oh my God. I, which and so this is a pretty reckless. Oh my! But you said the chorus, right? We yeah. might have to skip through to the chorus, or all right, I'll do that. But you I'm can kind of hear. Curious as to wait, wait, wait. Hundred uh... percent. Oh, uh, totally. Hundred <laughs> percent. Wait, wait. Let it play for a little bit, oh. as long as you can. Well, we can only probably only play twenty seconds of it legally. Oh, okay. But I heard. Oh my! Is this, God. Is oh. this where it gets though? I'll bring it back. That's this part. Yeah. That's what she says. Oh my God. It's, it's, yeah, that sounds like the give oh. it away. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm that, disappointed. Yeah. Wow, that is <laughs> that is very. I noticed it. It's I, not. I, I mean, I was playing it at WDHA, and I was like, hmm. And I actually <laughs> said it on the air. I said it reminds me of the Oh my God, the Guns and Roses version that was on the End of Days soundtrack in the late That's 90s. That's spot on, man. I, yeah. I could almost feel a lawsuit yeah. there. I, I... <laughs> I heard it. Wow. You heard it here first. I thought it was going to be one of those, ah, Jim, you're really, it's you're stretching here. <laughs> no, right away. You heard me freak out, so. Yeah. I'm disappointed. Come on. Wow. Taylor so that, Momsen. I, my, I, I don't know if anyone has a thread about this on my GNR forum, but I, I think that there might. There has to be. They, they're on top of everything. They are. All right, so back to yeah. other shows. So then I, I went and saw a couple of the, the uh you know, what well, you call them Axel and Friends shows. Uh, so is that the only of the of the of the classic three? lineup? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then um, I saw them at uh, Hammerstein Ballroom, but they were doing like three nights or something before they jumped to Europe. Yes. And uh, I have a very funny story about this. I was playing softball at Sirius XM during the day in Central Park, and I beat out a, a like a slow hit the first base and tore my hamstring. Mm. I mean, bad, bad. And I had tickets to the show. I went home the next day. I went to the show and I was limping. I had a, just a big limp and it hurt the whole time. And I went by myself because nobody, I couldn't get anybody to go with me, which was amazing. Were these people like, oh, it's not real yeah, Guns it's and not, Roses? Yeah, it's not the real Guns and Roses. I was like, well, bullshit. You're going to let I'm, your crippled self go I, by yourself? I, I limped my ass down to Hammerstein Ballroom and I and I got a ticket. And, and I get to the row where I'm about to go and I look and it's, and it's like a biker club. And it's like biker, 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 <laughs> biker, empty seat, biker, biker, <laughs> biker, biker. So somebody either in that biker group got locked up or couldn't make it. <laughs> and I bought that ticket. And I sat in the middle. I'm imagining of that these scene guys. like in uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure when he goes into yeah. where the motorcycles are. <laughs> it's exactly. I'm trying to use the phone. <laughs> I'm trying to use the phone. <laughs> and I'm sitting in the middle of these guys, and and the show is going, and they were great. This is when I think with um, 
I'm trying to think of everybody that was in the band at the time. I think was it was, it Robin Fink? I think I think Robin was in it at the time as well. I, I think, think Buck, I think I think Buckethead was there okay. as well. And it was a brain. Yeah, I believe I, I'm trying to remember the year. I know I know your the fans will will know the exact. They're date. like the menudo of classic rock at this point, <laughs> so it's hard to keep track. So um. And it was a great show, and this was the first time I saw them with the different lineup, and they mm-hmm. were great. I thought everything about the show was fantastic. I was like, "Why?" Well, Did I you have know. expectations? I just wanted to hear it. I okay. mean, I, you know, I just wanted to hear what it would sound like, and it, you know, it was was it different? Yes, but was it great? Yes. It, you know, not everything is going to be played exactly the way another person plays it. You know, and and the funny story about the 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 people that I'm sitting with, so. You know, throughout the night, you know, they're getting me beer and, you know, we're drinking and celebrating and having a good time. And, and like, in the middle of the show, and I, I think it was in, like, the middle of November rain. Okay. <laughs> if I can remember, they passed down a cane. They're like, we got you a cane. We found a cane for you. <laughs> we found a cane? <laughs> what they steal it from? Now, <laughs> now, that's the thing. It wasn't like, um, you know, it wasn't like one of those like ones you could buy in a surgical store. So like, like the, this uh, the was metal. A, this was a solid wood cane. This <laughs> like was the a, one I got. <laughs> yes. It was a very nice cane. And I'm like, they had to steal this from somebody <laughs> in a men's room or something. And they were like, all right, we saw you limping around. I was like... Thanks. I mean, what are you supposed to say? I'll ignore the blood stains on the handle, sir. <laughs> and so, and that, that's my biggest memory of that show. But, but I thought it was, I thought it was unbelievable. I thought they were great, and I was so looking forward to you know Chinese democracy coming out. And I know they they took a lot of slack, especially Axel got a bad rap on everything with that. And uh, then I went and saw them before the album came out. So I guess and this is like oh five or oh six maybe at the which no longer exists, the Meadowlands Arena. And that was with DJ Ashba, and that yep. show was amazing. They started late. I think is the sh- that the show I was at that you were we because we were both there, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I thought, and they started about ten thirty. I think sure. the band started, but which is expected. It's uh, yeah. especially at that point. Yeah, and it was yeah. that's early for them. And we were tailgating at because it was in the winter time, I believe. Yep, we were tailgating at the bar down the road, Reds. And Reds was like, and they used to have like a little shuttle bus that would shuttle you, basically would drop you off on the side of the highway, and you could walk into the arena. And they seemed to know the set times for all bands, because they want to keep you there as long as possible. And Asking Drinking. Alexandria opened. Yeah, I didn't see that. Mm-hmm. I didn't stay for them. I come in for them. But I remember the guys at the, the bartenders were like, they're not going on until 1030. And everybody's like, we don't know if we should go in now, or we should, and they, they were like, nope, we know the set time, we know what's going on at 1030. We're like, mm. All right, so we hung out and drank some more. And that, that was a great show. I still insist that was probably the best show I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. And, and I did get to see Giant Stadium with, you know, with Slash. Right. But sometimes there's just something about, I, I think I was way up front. There was just something about the vibe that night. I had an amazing time. I did too. And what was great for me was I finally convinced the people, my friends at the time, that who wouldn't come with me the night I was injured. I said, you have. I'll buy the tickets. I said, and I said, and they all were blown away. Your by friends it. suck. They let you go <laughs> handicapped. You have to pay for them to hang out with you. you fuck your friends. <laughs> <laughs> they bought tickets for me for shows before, so it was just my turn. And I said, you're really going to enjoy this. And every one of them were like, this is a this is a really great show. It is yeah. a great show. But uh, and Ian and I have discussed it. When I saw the Axel and Friends or Roses and Roses, like Dee Snyder has call, coined them before. Yeah, Rose and Roses. I saw them at Roseland. Mm-hmm. Uh, and even uh, when they came back before they canceled their 2002 show with, with Buckethead. And I, I think I just showed you, Ian, I just found uh, some apparel that I bought at that show that yeah. I completely forgot about. Right. That's like Chinese Democracy Tour 0203. And they canceled it the next day. Anyway, the point being, uh, I left enjoying the show. I thought it was great. I'm like, I don't know who this guy Buckethead is, passing out toys. DJ Ashba just looks like Bill the Bear, just like evil. <laughs> uh, but I left without that feeling, without that 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 vibe of just like I just left. I just saw Guns N' Roses. You know, the first time I was like, I, I saw Axel. I needed to see him. Although it, it, at the same time, he was dressed more like Ice Cube at the time, so it wasn't like the Axel I grew up with. Right. So that also left something to be desired. So that's why this time around, when we we, we so went separately, uh, we were hanging out before. Yeah, yeah, we we uh, we were we were your buddy who was wearing the Where's Izzy shirt. Yeah, Jay. Uh, Jay, uh, what, who was he? Our first podcast fan. 
Yeah, he's he's one so. of the we were hanging out the before first. the show, but I, I left like I I saw something. And you were that you were there too, right? Were you there the first night for oh, for the Metal Show Stadium? in Jersey? No, I wasn't. I didn't see those shows. Oh, okay. all right, I, I didn't you did. see them. No. So I left, and I wanted to go back the next night. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just found out a friend of mine decided to go without telling me, but whatever. I already yelled at him for that. Uh, but I saw uh, Axel DC as well, and I left like feeling like feeling I, I saw something. So there, I'm kind of uh, contradicting my point where I I didn't see ACDC, really. I saw Axel and Angus Young, but I left like I felt something. So I guess it is, like you said before, Jim, it just just depends. Well, do you think part of that is that you've talked about when you saw Axel DC that it was very obvious to you and to people who've seen it that they were having a ton of fun up there and really enjoying it. And when people have watched the, the current Guns N' Roses of Slash and Axel. There's been, hmm, is this a money grab? Are they really enjoying each other's company? And and that's still a still a question in the air to yeah. some. There are a lot of questions. But I you, think. But sure. you know what? We in the day in the day and age we are in now, bands can do that. Bands don't necessarily have to like each other anymore. I mean, but it means something to people. Well, as long as it as long as it's portrayed well on stage I, who's to know what's going on behind the scenes sometimes it's uh, more let's do obvious it now like like uh kiss or we, we read a letter um you weren't hearing in last episode from we have a fan forgive me i forget her name from portugal she mm-hmm. wrote a yeah. whole thing like it breaks her heart every time we talk about that doing it uh possibly money for grab the, for yeah. the money it breaks her heart and it bothers me too and we had on um uh, steve rochelle uh, from, from, tough. from tough and uh, metal, metal sludge, sludge. Uh-huh. and he changed my mind, and I was upset that he's like, it's a, still a business. Well, you know, they don't have to be friends and hold hair hands like Care Bears all the time. But we want to see that. It, it know, also I, goes I, I back do. to that. It goes back to that. Uh, you know, of all people, violent J quote I've, I've, that we played on the air. <laughs> sure. But a, a good example of this actually is I'm not a huge fan of them or anything, but a, as you guys know, LA Guns is reunited with the classic yeah, singer just, Phil I Lewis. Yeah, I just saw that. Yeah, and Tracy Guns. Did you right. just go in? Well, which is what I was going to bring okay. up is that I decided that now I'm a fan of Faster Pussycat. They're playing with them. So I was like, you know what? I'll go out. It's Long Island, Mulcahy's. Um, I'll go see the show. You know, bought mm-hmm. a ticket that night. And I think people liked the vibe of this. So they did their full set. Good show. I was not blown away by anything. The one thing I will it's break some balls on that I've told you <laughs> is I don't think Phil Lewis should exactly be wearing a shirt with his uh, belly hanging out. Like he's not exactly. Oh, oh is he in- doing the? Uh, <laughs> is he doing the Billy Corgan? He's he's got a bit of a gut going on, and don't wear that shirt if you have. <laughs> no. But he sounds great. All right. The band sounds killer. Um, it's it's new guys besides those two. Because apparently the drummer, the original drummer who was touring with Phil Lewis, really doesn't get along with Tracy Guns. So anyway, the, okay. the point I wanted opera. to get to is that the last song they did was their biggest hit, Ballad of Jane. Mm-hmm. And after I believe it was the first verse, they all kind of came together in a huddle. They start talking and they're like, man, I love playing with you guys. I love you guys. Really? And then as they're saying this, they're like, wait, wait, wait we got to finish the song. And then they, they kept playing. And I think fans really appreciate seeing something like that. Sure. I could, I could definitely see that. Because it seems so genuine, and it just feels, it's that feeling of awesome. These guys are enjoying playing with each other, and this is not just about a business. Right. This is about brothers that that wrote these songs together and came up together. And I kind of do wish I saw something like that at the Guns N' Roses show. I've said before, I wish that we'd, we'd see... Like in those old shows, oh, well, Slash a... jump on the piano during November rain and play the solo. Sure. I mean, there's been a couple instances where Axel has gone over to Slash and, and tickled him. Like, I'm not sure. even trying to be funny. That's actually happened. Well, and and the memes are out there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's what I do like to say. But I'll ask Jim since he's the yeah. expert uh, of anything Bruce. I mean, that's, <laughs> yes, that's true. He is. That's what I, I, have, I haven't been to a Bruce show. I mean, I'm... How many have you Luke been to? Warm. Oh, God, I wouldn't know. I don't keep track. But <laughs> Hundreds? Uh, not hundreds, but I, you know, close. I would think around wow. that mark. You know, but um, it seems like that's the environment that I would even compare uh, a Guns N' Roses sh- show now, just because of the, the the length. Yeah, Bruce does what three hour shows, three, three plus, and a half. Yeah, I mean, who other than Axel is even doing that right now? Axel and Bruce, and then the vibe. It's a little. I would, obviously, I'm assuming it's much a little different, and uh, not much a little. I should pick one word. A little different uh, than Gun, just because it's it's a different context of music or vibe of music yeah uh but it's still the atmosphere the atmosphere is that 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 band 
the E Street Band with Bruce is is like it's like a solid. It's like it's a brotherhood. It's like everybody up there is. It's like the white G unit. <laughs> everybody, everybody, <laughs> super is super excited to play with each other, and you can see that. And that's I think that's something that the fans really appreciate is how. Um, Everybody up there just loves being with each other. You know, I was I was at an event last night and Bruce was there with uh, with Stevie and and Roy Bitten, the piano player, and they're just hanging out all you know, off you know off the stage. Not not there's no there was nothing in it for them financially to yeah. be at this benefit last night, and and they were there and they were just enjoying their company. I think that's other. why everyone loves Duff so much because he's just always smiling and he just yeah. seems to be in a good mood. And I think that's what people want. And they're giving us more than what they initially signed up for. Right. Or was it just like the first 25 dates and it was nothing overseas yet. And then they, you know, they're coming back around now. And uh, recently they're, uh, it might have been under a sponsorship. Slash was shown in the studio. Of course, now all the outlets are running with YZ in there. It could just be a photo op. I mean, for, could be. But uh, now there's, there's still, there's hope. Yeah. I think that's something you always got with Bruce. There's oh, hope. yeah. Even after Clarence, I mean, there was always uh, and hope everybody with that band. was wondering what he would do and how he would move on, and and you know, would he ever play certain songs again because Clarence isn't there? And he, he worked around it. For the first tour, he brought out a horn section instead of instead of putting it all on Jay Clemens, his, Clarence's nephew. He brought out two saxophone players and two horn players. See, that doesn't bother you, and I'm still reading. Uh, and we're going to talk about this. Uh, maybe I guess this is going to be the next episode when we have Art Devana back on. He just did a uh, piece on um, Melissa Reese. For LA Weekly. Yeah, for LA Weekly. And uh, just some comments on that. Like, why does Guns N' Roses need keyboard? I mean, we're still having this conversation. Yeah. These years later, you know, they had none in Appetite for Destruction. And there's somebody who's, you know, you're a Bruce purist. Even though I don't know how more pure you can get, uh, being Bruce Springsteen, <laughs> I mean, you're not complaining. It's just like, oh, it's it's not Clarence. It's just the whole section. You can't replace him. Oh, you can't do. You know, it doesn't yeah. matter. You know, are certain players allowed to play specific songs? Right. Do I, people have that hang up? Not That's really. My point. Not. Re I mean, there are there is a percentage of the audience that would love to just see it stripped down to to its you know original what's left of the original members. And that would be without, you know, without Nils Lofgren, which I can't see how you could do a show without Nils because I think he's a phenomenal guitar player. You know, just having like Bruce, Stevie, Max, Roy, Gary, and Charlie uh, because Danny's passed away. And you would have to have Jake to play the sax because Clarence passed away. How about a Clarence Fleming's hologram? How do you feel about that? No, no holograms. I know, I, I know Wendy Rob, Dio. Was I know Wendy's all for it. It's you know so what? weird. It's so weird. That's perfectly fine. And if people want to go see that, God bless. Go have a blast with it. But no, I don't think holograms would would work with Clarence or, or Danny Federici. Um, but but as far as like Guns N' Roses having a keyboard player and having backup, there's I don't think there's anything wrong. With giving your music uh, more depth by expanding the sound a little bit, and that's kind of what that does. It gives it a fuller uh, live feel, you know. Mm -hmm. And I know they're not original members of the band or they're hired people to be a part of something. But what's wrong with making your music bigger, you know? I, and, I and always... expanding it. I, I know everybody wants this moment in time where it's yeah. the original guys and it's you know gas, member berries. gas up the van and let booze and blow and hookers and, and let's just go <laughs> yeah. like pirates you know but these guys are in their 50s people I grow think up now. people mature people grow, and you have to and music has to com continuously evolve you know and those guys have done that i mean together and separately and the, that, there's nothing wrong with that the one comment i always see people break balls over regarding what we're talking about on on the forums mm -hmm. is you know what was missing on welcome to the jungle <laughs> bongos they always bring that up because it's uh you know how they always have dizzy reed I think it's always Dizzy Reed playing the bongos okay. live, oh. and that's always the comment of like, "Do you really need a guy playing bongos on Welcome to the Jungle?" And I, I kind of see the point. I get it, but also again, that that album was made at a different time in a different way, and and the production styles were different, and and the the, the artists were different. You know, everything was, now. If you made a gun, you know, Welcome to the Jungle now, I'm sure it would have some kind of a a beat loop in it, maybe, possibly. I mean, you listen mm. to listen to the way rock bands record today. Listen to new rock bands. You'll find a lot more production yeah. in them now. Oh, of course. You know, except the punk bands. They kind of keep it real as much as possible. You'd hope so if they're actually a punk band. Yeah. <laughs> I can't not, imagine. <laughs> not like mall punk. Not like Hot Topic punk. No. I mean, while I do enjoy the pop punk, I, I know what you're talking about. The, the, the real punk. The Ramones, <laughs> the Clash. Yes. Yes, of course. Yes. But, uh, you're, you're friends with uh, Frank... Uh, 
Frank Ferrara, right? I uh, we we are acquaintances. I wouldn't say he comes over for pasta on Sunday, but 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 I see him around quite a bit, and he's we, I've talked to him on Facebook and Twitter a little bit. Uh, he's a big supporter of the New York City music scene. He's got a you know he's got he's a, from Brooklyn, right? Yeah, he's got a side band called Pisser. Um, which I think are in the studio right now, going to record. Cool. So once we get new music, you guys should definitely check that out. And he's so this is because of your connection with Ten Ton Mojo, really, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, 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 I'm no longer managing Ten Ton oh, Mojo. Okay. I, I stepped away just because I don't have the time. Sure. But sure. we're we're all buds and we're solid and everything's cool. And and uh, by the way, they got a show um, May 27th at the Gramercy Theater. They're headlining that night. How long have they been around? Ten Ton Mojo's been around about four years. Four, oh. four or five years. Okay, because I'm thinking of another band then. Okay. Stuck Mojo. Oh, there Stuck is. Mojo is very there different band because they're in the rap metal yeah. genre. What Ten Ton all? Mojo, from what I know, is more of like a classic sounding yeah. or, oh. or Ten Ton Mojo rock and roll band. Ten Ton Mojo is between like ACDC and the Black Crows and like Buck Cherry and that kind of sound. Yeah. What about yeah. Mojo Jojo? Not so fast, Mojo Jojo. <laughs> Who's that one? Powerpuff Girls. All right, Mojo I'm the, Nixon. I'm the only... I'm the only one who watches 10-year-old girl cartoons, apparently. Yeah. Uh, then I want to play this clip for you. We, we've played this before. Mm -hmm. This is um, because we're talking about members replacing members and talking about Frank. This is the Stephen Adler uh, clip that we got from Mitch LaFon's uh, interview talking about uh, talk about Frank. So uh, I don't think this needs to set up. It'll speak for itself. He's not playing him right. He's just really a great timekeeper. I mean, put it this way. They're playing Brownstone. I didn't know they were playing Brownstone until all of a sudden they started singing a chorus. We've been dancing. I'm going, Dad, was Brownstone? Brownstone, you know, instantly. I came up with a kick ass group. Bah, 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 bah. You know that. And I didn't, I'm standing going, What song is this? You know, I mean, just to put it back in somewhat context, if you're hearing that for the first time, uh, Jim or any, anyone mm -hmm. listening. Uh, I mean, he had wonderful things to say about Frank and just about the reunion in general, but he kept kind of inter interjecting just things he was not happy with, and that was one of those moments. And that's what, just what bothers me, which is the antithesis of everyone like hugging each other, L.A. guns uh, in, in the middle of the stage, and, mm. and, and they're complaining. He's complaining when it's like, oh, it's great. And now he's complaining. He's talking about specific members. I don't. That bothers me. Well, you know? Stevens, I think Stevens just bitter over the whole thing that he wasn't asked to play. He but, apparently was asked to play, but and not he had enough, that back injury. Not but, enough, yeah. according to him. And then now he he wasn't asked to do the full set. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I know he's got. I know he's got up and played, but no, I think he's. I think he's probably bitter that he wasn't asked to do the whole tour. Yeah, that he, he as the drummer and not right. Frank or or you know or whoever else they could possibly think of bringing in. Well, he could um, still play, you know. And, those and, are the I, and I think, that bother me. and I think that's where, and I think that's where Stevens just that's where his head's at. You know, he he feels that if it's going to be Slash and Duff, it should be me, and if it's not me, well, then this is you know this is bullshit. And well, and I you know, I guess that's the maturity thing that uh, that we were just discussing. That I just don't think I've heard nothing but good things about him as a person. You mm -hmm. know, talking about all the addiction stuff uh, aside, and I don't even believe addiction makes you a bad person. That's a whole no, of that's not. a whole other conversation. But it's a maturity thing that I don't think he's hit yet, where it seems like Slash, Duff, and Axel seem to have hit right now. We'll, we'll see if Izzy hits it. Well, also, I mean, I'm sure Steven could probably use the money. He says, in, there's another uh, quote that he says, thank God I don't need the money. Okay, so it, it well, good, been... good for him then. I would think he would, but that's, you know, my well, who, own opinion. Well, who knows? Who, could use who, knows? An, who couldn't use an extra few thousand here? Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm thinking, though? What's the video of him playing, I think it's You Could Be Mine, yeah. and so, that looks like it's at his house? Yeah. So it looks I mean, like a damn nice house. Yeah, I mean, okay. he's practicing. I mean, well, didn't uh, MC Hammer have a nice house once? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these... I mean, by now, though, he'd probably sell it if he really needs the money, and yeah, he doesn't look like he's having no, any issues. No, for sure. Just... I mean, uh, Jason Newstead, I think, recently came out and said that he could basically live comfortably the rest of his life yeah. off the royalties of the Black Album. Of the Black Album, right. I saw so that. So I would think it's a somewhat similar situation for Steven, and I don't even... Good. I think the songwriting credits, I think they shared. I'd have to double-check that. And Jason doesn't even care. I mean, he went up on the, the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and he played with uh, with Rob. Yeah, but mm -hmm. I just mean if on if on Appetite it's shared songwriting credits, right. then that must mean you know every time Welcome to the Jungle is in a Taco Bell commercial, Adler's getting paid. That's good then. So, good for him. That's yeah. that's great. But I I just kind of think that that Steven seems to be better over. It. And look, I think with musicians. They always can criticize if somebody's playing somebody else's song or somebody's, you know, bass line or drum part. They're always going to have something to say, you know, and not every per person's going to play it the same way anyway. So, 
you know, I've, I mean, just making a Bruce Springsteen reference here. I mean, Max Weinberg's son, Jay, step, not, right? stepped in and played a few dates for Bruce. Cause, oh, cause okay. Max had, he was still doing Conan O'Brien and he had commitments. Right. To the Conan O'Brien stuff. So Jay Weinberg, who before was in Slipknot, filled in. And were the songs different? Oh, yeah, they were. They were completely different. But you know what? So what? I, it was great. That's why I, Jay know. was playing like he has long hair at the time. He was playing <laughs> it was like Animal from the Muppets. Like it's like <laughs> just, just hair and sticks are flying, and you know, and it was a heavier sound. It was a heavier beat, and Bruce loved it. He rocked out to it. You know, he was playing heavier guitar with that with those songs. That's what kills me about uh, not doing a Led Zeppelin reunion. I mean, especially not if, yet. if you have. A, I mean, I I, I said <laughs> I this. Saw that. All right, so this is also can bleed into and will into Guns and Roses because I said it last year. Uh, Desert trip. This was uh, out in California. It was like a whole weekend. Uh, old cella, old, right? Old cella. That's the, uh, the not official term of it, right? So last year it was what? Uh, Neil Young. It was the uh, the Stones. It was the Who. Bob Dylan. Who else am I forgetting? Neil Young. There might be somebody. I think that's about the majority okay. of it. And then so now there 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 are rumors. I mean, there are always Zeppelin rumors, which yeah. there were always Guns and Roses rumors. There were always Van Halen rumors. Yes. Two out of three came true. Uh, th- thus far, so we will see if Led Zeppelin, and that's where we're going, to, uh, are going to reunite. And for all those reasons, if you have the right player, you know, I was John Bonham died well well before I was born, right? But I would, I want to see fucking Led Zeppelin. You know, I want to see Led Zeppelin. I understand that, and, and uh, careful what you wish for. <laughs> are you saying I, you're afraid it might not be? I, I, yeah, I, I, I think. Look, what somebody other than Robert Plant? No, you can't oh. do that. You can't do it without Robert Plant. Well, they they were talking about that once. Well, that was just basically Jimmy Page just wanted to get out and play. Oh. And if Robert Steven wasn't going Tyler, to do right? it, yeah, they were talking about Stephen Tyler. I I think um, some other names came up. I don't remember who they were. But you yeah. know, I don't know. I mean, those are amazing songs, and I don't know if, where Robert's voice is at this point, and if he's capable of pulling that off. And sure. I think he's still I, doing the Allison Krauss thing, though. No? Yeah, but he's not hitting. He's not. In other words, the songs are going to sound different. They're going to have to retool these songs to fit his range. So you know then what I mean? we get into the problem where people have criticized Axel's voice. Yeah. And, you know, and, and brutal to David Lee Roth over the last tour. Yeah. But then that's something else. Does Bruce sound the same? I mean, he's always, eh, boy, the wrong. I mean, he's always, sound- <laughs> sorry. He's going to punch I'm, you in the face I'm right now. No, your no, hero. No, no. <laughs> but I mean, I don't know if he has that kind of voice where it could be affected by his age. I think, I think Bruce's voice has actually improved over the past 15 years. If you listen to, uh, if you listen to concerts from the Rising Tour, which was back in 2002, uh, compared to what he's done over the past year, I think his voice has improved. He also did get surgery. Oh, okay. Um, he he did have it's in his new book. So he's had some maybe surgery. That's what Axel had, but the different maybe maybe but because he di- got better all of a sudden. Yes, he did. He, Axel's voice definitely improved over the past. It's not several steroids. Years. This is in baseball. You did something happen. Something. Well, you learn how to take care of it. You know, he that's... credited ACDC for that. He's like, I've never gone to a rehearsal before. <laughs> he says this is a 50 year old man. He's not he's not going to mess around with Angus Young. Right. Even though he's two foot three. Well, he's a hired gun. <laughs> yes, you pun know, intended. He is. Um, I, I think, you know, you get older, you start to because here's the thing. You get older, you start to slow down, you realize you can't do when you were younger. So your lifestyle changes quite a bit yeah. and you have to take care of the you have to take care of the one important thing that keeps you working keeps yeah. your money going so i know when bruce isn't performing like if he has he'll never do back to back shows there's always a night off in between oh okay has to be, and that whole next day he doesn't speak a word i think that says more more something more about his own work ethic because the thing is i think whether bruce's voice is shot or he sounds amazing, that he's going to sell out wherever he plays. Like, yeah. I know how diehard his fans are because yeah. of you and because of I, and you have also, a whole station on Sirius and these people listen to you every week and love telling Bruce stories and not many artists the could shows. Be like that. Yeah, I don't, I, I really don't think it would affect his bottom line whether his voice is on or off. And he's had off nights. I'm sure all artists do. But the yeah. one, well, the thing that makes Bruce a little bit different is you can see Bruce four different. Uh, shows in a week and you'll get a completely different set list okay. every night. That's that's something and we talked about this at length. I'm not I'm, I'm going to do the the Ian motto and never ever look at a set <laughs> list again because I posted it on uh, on our site on our Facebook and Twitter and he yelled at me like it was a spoiler. 
And it was for me. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Uh, so now every show, I don't even watch any of the shows, even though the set lists are similar. But Bruce, I do like that, that the fact that it, it's completely and plus, yeah. and plus he takes, people bring signs and they take sign requests. Well, so I really? wish more bands that, would do that, That man. is one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. Like and, That is and, interesting. And it, and I'm holding up a one in a million sign <laughs> <laughs> next time. I don't think you're getting that. <laughs> but, no. but he'll, you know, there'll be fans and they bring their like their like poster boards and they have like all these different signs up. And, you know, Bruce has a catalog of songs, which yeah. is ridiculous. Sure. You know, and they'll they'll pull out a song like, um, you know, like like Pretty Flamingo, which was never on an album. It was an outtake. And he'll grab the sign. He'll show it to the band. They'll show it to the left. They'll show it to the right. They'll put it in, in front of the stage. All right, you guys ready? One, two, three. And they'll go right and into it. And they know it. it. That's and cool. they know it. That's, that's I really wish more bands would do that. That is cool to see. And you that's are a special with this, artist right there. Yeah, yeah. Well, the band. And, and it band, makes band, them, sure. And the band is just solid that they know. And, and it takes them. And you can see they, like, fiddle for a minute. And it's usually one or two guys always know. Like, I think, like, Gary Talent and Nils Lofgren pretty much – they're encyclopedias, and they do put a teleprompter up for Bruce for the lyrics. Sure. So they have, they do pull that off. But, okay, and, and, and people have yelled at Axel before whenever they see the teleprompter, but that's always like the 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 uh, angle all, and all bands and, and, have and, and it, clickbait. Though. Yeah, of course. There's nothing wrong with having that up. No, I do want to ask though, and this is goes along with the uh, the Bruce thing. When Ian and I have discussed this in full length, um, Axel came out uh, in, in a Mexico City show with a Donald Trump pinata. And if you follow uh, specifically uh, Del James, uh, Richard Ford is pretty active on it as far as being political. Uh-huh. And especially like even when, when Duff wore the woman, just a Women's March t shirt. Nothing I would think was that polarizing. Dude, the, yeah, don't and tell it, me the Women's March wasn't polarizing. Uh, I mean, whatever. We're, we're, that's, that's our other show. That's your the show. The Women's March was a, was basically a liberal march. That's what it was. It, dep- it wasn't just about women. It was about liberal issues. If, if Duff McKagan is wearing it and having his, like, his daughter and his wife right there, are you really going to start shit? Like, really? Is that, no, is but don't tell me it's not a political statement. It's a very oh, political statement. As mu- All right, fine. As much as the pinata, I don't think that was as, as, as bad. No, but they're both— Or they're garnered both, a backlash But as they're much. definitely not being apolitical these days, is my no, point. No, they're not, you know? and that's where I'm getting at. Mm. I would just— Go to do not even going where all the nerds live in the forums. It's going to Guns N' Roses main Facebook page, and people, you know, you lost a fan. Don't you? You know, you're ostracizing half your fan base. Blah blah. blah. And Bruce has no problem with that. Yeah, he's been doing that for quite a while, and that's not hurting him at all. So I don't know. We've discussed this with other people. Does that bother you at all? Does that take anything away? Because I don't know uh, if. If it was something against my beliefs, yeah, would it bother me? And that hasn't happened with with Guns N' Roses for me, so I can't answer that. I don't, you know, I don't really care what an artist's politics are. I really don't. I don't. I don't come to. I don't like a band. I don't like somebody's music because of their political beliefs, whatever side they they pick or whatever they want to do. You know, I know Bruce talks a lot. He talks at his concerts. I know he played for Obama. I know he was a Hillary supporter. Well, then at his concert then. Does that bother you? It's it's stopping a show. You know what bothers me? What bothers me is when there's a person next to me trying to shout him down. I don't that uh-huh. that bothers me. I don't I don't care. You know, is is Bruce if an art, I listen. I think if an artist influences your vote, that scares me. I don't. Sure. I, I, you know, I think you should be thinking for yourself and yeah. make it make it make your choose who you want to vote for based no, on of course. your own opinions, and not because uh, this guy supports it or you know that woman supports or whatever. Like that's ridiculous. That's not even saying the. They're allowed to have their opinions on things. They could be wrong. Right, you know, uh, <laughs> it's using the the platform. Like, so, so it's not even like what the, what the effect may or may not be. Right, it's it's the platform. Or the, the, not that they should they be allowed. It's they, that's fine. Yeah, in, in, in America, at least. Well, in America for now, because you can be arrested for laughing. So who knows? <laughs> uh, so it's it's interesting just the platform of it and how it hasn't hurt Bruce. And that was uh, just we've discussed well, before, you and I that we don't. It doesn't seem to be hurting Guns N' Roses now. Well, I, I, then well, then people are smart enough to realize that regardless of the artist on stage, whatever a political opinion is, it doesn't. It shouldn't really have an an effect on you. As long as you know you enjoy their music and enjoy going to their concerts, you know. Listen, you can skip over that during that whatever message needs to be. Sp- said by a bass player or a singer or a drummer, okay, well, that's when you go get a beer. The only thing that's, uh, that's <laughs> if weird. If you don't like it. Yeah. The, the or only, go, go to the bathroom. All right. The only thing that's weird with Bruce in particular, I think, is the fact that Chris Christie is oh, this yeah. diehard Bruce sure. Springsteen fan. Yeah, yeah, and he hates him. And he hasn't he basically talked shit about him 
at a show that yeah. Christie was at? Yeah. At that him. point, you're you're ostracizing a diehard fan <laughs> who happens to be the governor. That's pretty crazy, I think. Well, Bruce's approval percentage was higher than Christie's at the time, <laughs> so he got away with it. Uh, is he yeah. just cringing in his seat as everybody's looking at him? I, I mean, don't know. I wasn't. I never. I I know he was there at the one of the shows, but I didn't. I didn't actually see. Chris it's just Christie. so crazy to me. He's basically up there being like, he's "Your governor a is a fat piece of shit," <laughs> <laughs> and he's there. That's like telling like, your father telling you your, your failure of life. You meant you were meant to be an abortion. Like, I think. <laughs> I mean, I think. I think Chris Christie was probably like. Really he knows upset. my name. No, not only that. Oh. Well, no, he's like, you know, why Why are you being mean to me, Bruce? This is why I, I eat. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love your music. Why are you being so mean to me? Uh, it's too funny. It's, uh, you see a lot of that. You see, you know, like, what Trump tried to use, like Rolling Stone songs and things like that, you know, and um, these bands like, I want no association. Yeah. So, I mean, it does happen. It's just when we they reach a certain level, like a Guns N' Roses, like a Bruce, I guess some bullets can't, you know, get through that, that armor of this... This catalog of of just music that has just lasted generations. Yeah. I, d- I do get why it bothers people, and that going to a concert should be an escape. And I think like that's why even I didn't though, see Ted Nugent. Well, I don't want to hear that. I was shit. gonna mention that, and also um, Kiss. You know, even though Gene Simmons is very political outside of that's music, why I, yeah. But if you yeah, s- ever see that. their shows, they never get political on stage, and the whole thing is about we're trying to escape the world, and they always do that off stage. They're very political, but they don't do it on stage. <laughs> they can't. And uh, this Ted one's N- about the Cold War. <laughs> I was made for love you. <laughs> Ted Nugent, as you said, extremely political on stage. Half the and show angry. seems to be politics. Yeah. I can see why people don't like it. And actually, to be honest, I'm a fan of old Ted Nugent. I had a Ted Nugent shirt, and I remember I was wearing it at the gym around the time that he was saying a lot of stuff about Trayvon Martin. And he was saying, like, Trayvon Martin was a thug. It, it wasn't even like he d- he disagreed with pe- He was going out of his way to be malicious to the family of Trayvon Martin. Yeah. And I was thinking at the time, just wearing a Ted Nugent shirt, when people see that, do they think of me as liking Ted Nugent's music or that I support his views on Both. the Trayvon Martin stuff? Yeah, or, yeah. Because I, I don't agree with those views. Yeah. So it kind of sucks that... You can't really wear a, a shirt of a musician you like without associating with that musician's politics. I don't know if you've gotten that, that with political. Bruce. I don't know if we got with Bruce. Like, if people think you're a liberal because of of that, and now, I think I think most people assume that. I think I think most people assume, you, yeah, you're you're associated with the company that you keep. You know, and I'm politically, I'm I don't agree with everything Bruce says at all. I mean, I'm not, I'm not. I'm kind of I'm my own free thinker. In other words, I don't I don't perfectly align Good, that's with, with any. That's the way it should be. I don't perfectly opinion. align with any musicians or artists' politics, and I I don't think anybody should. I agree. You know, um, but yeah, I, I you know, I, and I you know, people come up to me all the time and they're like, oh, you work for Bruce, like, oh, so you like, you know, so what do you think of this when he says this, and how come, you know, oh, he supports Hillary, but he doesn't talk about the working man anymore. He lives in a big mansion. Well, he's allowed to do that. He <laughs> or kinda, you could even he kind of earned it. Right. With, with you, you know? in particular, I, hopefully you don't mind me bringing this up, but sure. like, you know, you worked with Dave Marsh. Dave Marsh is extremely to the left, and people might yeah. associate you with that. I could tell you working at Sirius, I think I was a little bit of an anomaly if people wondered because I produced Senator Bill Bradley's show, and I also worked on Andrew Wilkow's show. Right. Polar opposites. I don't Bipolar. align with either of them all the way, you know? Yeah. It, it does kind of suck where people put you in a box because of because who of the, you're associated with. It's a job. With. I also worked, listen, it, the, what, tell you about extremes like i worked for air america radio yeah you guys remember that sure that was basically Mm -hmm. they won't officially say that but it was funded by the democrat party to get to to get uh, john Kerry into office Mm. and i worked for that place that place was a disaster (laughs) well when i i I (laughs) and i didn't agree and i didn't i didn't like Kerry, and i didn't i didn't care about but just like you know but everybody just assumed oh you're part of the Kerry campaign i'm like no no i do commercial production i wasn't even on the air I didn't have anything to do with any of the shows. I just did commercials. And that's the uniqueness, I think, of uh, of Guns N' Roses. That we've, you know, that's why we're doing this. Other than things just liking the music, I don't know if they're associated. I mean, other than now, we they made it obvious associated with any particular party or age group or uh, ideology. Whether you're just uh, whether you're a metalhead or a sorority girl, I, yeah. I, I've said any, anyone in between. You like this music. I don't know if you can really assume. I, I put up pictures on our Twitter of you know, Kim Kardashian wearing Guns N' Roses shirts. Or, yeah. Of all these, because you know, they're they're that universal. I, I, even though so, I think it's become a fashion statement. It's a fashion thing. You, you ever see the now, meme that has, uh, I think it's uh, not not Chloe, not Kylie, the other one, Kendall, 
wearing a Slayer shirt. She, why do you even yeah. know all these names? No, so she was wearing a Slayer shirt, and then next to that picture is she the, knows the one current song. guitarist. I'm trying to think of his name, who was in Testament, who's now, you know, because Jeff Hanneman died. Oh, I can't think of it either right now. Name too. A- anyway, Rip so Jeff. he's wearing a shirt that says Kill the Kardashians <laughs> on stage, which is pretty funny. So uh, That is pretty great. I yeah. mean, you know, the guns and... You know, listen, if you have a great logo, more, more merch you can sell. You know, Kiss is a great logo. The original Van Halen logo is a great logo. The Guns N' Roses, the circle with the two. I mean, uh, that's a that's an awesome logo. Of See, course, of course, people are going to wear that. Well, then you like the uh, of all ages. Then you did you like because uh, those are the uh, the apparel that I found when I guess Axel tried to reinvent Guns N' Roses and had GNR kind of what would you even say what kind of like italic. Uh, font that was when it was just G like and the and sign R and it was within the star like a Chinese ninja star. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they changed everything. I guess for Chinese democracy, right. Everything different and even uh, now, uh, they're very visual, uh, which we found out uh, through Estranged and all the dolphins uh, that they have all those lithographs right at every show. Yeah. And, and they're incredible looking. I mean, they're all on eBay for like all hundreds of dollars. Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. So, yeah, they're very visual. And I never got that from, from Bruce. If he's, uh, maybe, I'm, am I missing anything? Is he a visual? Because uh, I want, now that I have a Bruce expert here, so I want to find the parallels. On the last tour, they did, um, it was the, ri- they re, they had a, the River box set, which the River came out in 1981. So they, they put out a box set. There was all these outtakes and stuff. So he went out and toured. This past year, playing the whole River album from start. It was a double album from start to finish. So that's 21 songs there. Then then he would do another 15 or 12. So each city had a specific poster from that night. So and it would be like and but they were all old photos from like Bruce back in 81. All right, cool. So they did that was a visual thing. It was like a collector's item. And people a lot of people went to almost every show just to get that poster. Because I want to see these mature acts, I don't want to say older acts, doing something different. The ones that have been on the road for for decades. So I mm-hmm. like where it's it's different every city or every tour. It's not just going out, let's you know, cash a check on our hits. Well, and no, yeah, he doesn't do. Bruce. Yeah, he doesn't do a greatest hits set. Guns and Roses doesn't do a greatest hits set. Right. Um, I'll say that I I didn't bring it up yet. I got to see the Rat reunion. Yes, which was great. Yeah. Had a great time. Uh, it was a greatest hits set. But I think that's kind of what the people want. I'm know? wondering if this year it's going to be greatest hits for Appetite because it's the 30th year. I feel like Axel, no matter what, at least at this point, wants to do Chinese democracy songs. And I like that because... I have no problem with it, but... I don't have a problem with it at all. Maybe they do both albums back to back. To me, it also <laughs> shows that he's an artist. He likes to create, and it gives me hope that they're going to put out a new album. That's All right, let's talk about that, if we can. Sure. There needs to be a new album. I, think I don't know. Point, sure. I don't know. I know he's takes his time with things. Uh, Axel, you are the Super Bowl of self-abuse. I was, was... Wa- I was watching uh, Friday the 13th Part 4, and there's a character named Axel. Oh, so I got some yeah. sound bites. I don't believe you, Axel. <laughs> oh, Axel. And then he got his neck chopped off with the chainsaw. Sorry. Okay. Um, <laughs> I told you I have Tourette's. But if we, uh, I mean, uh, has there been any talk? I haven't heard anything about them trying to go into the studio and record. There's anything. been talk, but there's like nothing solid. That's how it's been for years at yeah. this point. Well, you know. how, do you think it would be good material like what what do you think of slash's soul material or velvet revolver you no know, you know, actually here's uh the, since you're on I like both of them Go ahead. in radio i mm-hmm. guess bouncing off what you're saying uh when radio first picked up chinese democracy it lived and it had a quick death yeah. do you see the same thing happening now uh even with slashes i don't know if uh dha if they ever did they play any of slashes oh, solo yeah. stuff okay sure because uh, some a lot of uh, stations don't play it unless it's old school GNR, they're not touching it. No, There's we, so we, much good material out there afterwards. My 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 station WDHA acknowledges every every part of those guys. You know, they'll play solo slash stuff. But you know, honestly, they did kind of skip over Chinese Democracy. And if I ever get the freedom to drop a song in, I usually drop in better. Mm, yeah. I, just to just to kind of throw it off a little bit. I mean, I don't think we needed to hear Civil War again. I'll figure we'll put better yeah. in or something like that. Um, and you and, need a shorter like, song to make the top of the hour. Well, that's true, too. You have to, <laughs> that's you have, a radio you have inside your, joke. Yes. <laughs> you have to hit that top between uh, 58 and 02. <laughs> Has to land in there. Uh, I think if there's new Guns and Roses with the current lineup, that'll get a lot more radio airplay. 
I just feel like there was this real negative stigma against Axel, and and, and no matter and because it took so long for the album to finally get made and put out, that it, I think it was I think it was dead on arrival. I yeah, re- they were I really expecting think something was. they never could have. They, they like it basically expected another Appetite for Destruction, and yeah, it, it's not going to live up to that. Um, personally, so here's how I would feel about the um, material if they were to do it with the current band. I like you guys. I love Chinese Democracy. Velvet Revolver, I, I never really got into that second album. First album, second I Second album was, was not very good. A, a yeah. couple of good tracks, but yes, I agree. First was solid. Yeah. Uh, Duff's material, I, I haven't listened to a lot of Loaded. What I heard, I felt like, eh, it was all right. Um, his, I remember the one solo album, he did Believe in Me. I, and I'm don't forget about of, the uh, Neurotic Outsiders. Which was oh, that. Yeah. Uh, Matt Sorum oh. and, and, uh, and Duff, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Not really familiar with it. We played him on a show. Thanks for remembering. <laughs> Um, and then Slash's solo material, I don't know. There's nothing about it that I love. I, I really don't like Miles Kennedy. To me, he's just he's just like generic rock singer. That's how I would describe him. You got to listen to like Anastasia. He's a very nice great... guy. He's a very nice guy, Miles Kennedy. Back um, to Cali? Sure. That's such a good song. Back to Cali. It's such a good song. Not the... Uh... LL Cool J? Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> is that LL Cool J or Tupac? That's, that's going back to Cali. Yeah, uh, that's LL. And, okay. And, and, and Biggie white. Head. I don't know. Ba- Biggie Head back to Cali. Okay. Okay. <laughs> something about California. The Mamas and the Papas, something like that. Yeah. Um, the Slash, Slash solo material, I kind of like that first album he did with all the um, the different people singing on it. Yeah, Fergie, Dave Grohl. right? Fergie did something. Lemmy did something. Yeah. Dave Grohl. I like that album better. It was kind of like an all star uh, thing. Adam Levine was on it. They had a, a lot. They had of a bunch of different Aussie. people on it. Slash yeah. is it real? <laughs> Sorry, I have a my phone with my soundboard. Um, I like that. I Miles is is all right. I think some of those songs. He's a nice guy. I, his voice is okay. I just don't think he's a good front man at all. He I just stand, He's like Avril Levine. He just stands there. Hmm. I could see that. I could see why you would say that. I mean, he has a powerful voice, but all he does is he like he puts his like hand up and down, like he's Bugs Bunny with the conductor. He's like up, oh, I'm down. He doesn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I just you know I would love to see new music. I would love to hear new music from Guns N' Roses, and I think it'll be great. I really do. Those are great players, and you know as we have been witness to, you put all that chemistry into a studio, they're going to put out some great shit. And you know I know Izzy's not part of it, but that's. So, you know, I think... Listen, we'll see. We'll see for now. Well, I, well, is there any Izzy talk at this point? I don't think there is, right? I think that's something we've just discussed at length, and you were saying it now, so now I know... Uh, that's why I like. I love doing this podcast. That I'm finding out there's more and more crazy people like Ian and I. Because <laughs> for a while, I was just going on my GNR forum and searching the internet for different versions of Chinese democracy songs. That's what I was doing. I mean, doing, that's yeah. all I was doing. It was all rumors. Yeah. So that's all we got now, but at least it's something. And, mm-hmm. and there's also rumors of Axel and Angus doing yeah. new music together. Yeah, I heard so about that too. Possibly like new. I, I guess you call it ACDC, right? It's it's Axel DC. Axel DC. <laughs> no, I guess he has to. Um, I think the original uh, lead singer uh, was it Dave Evans? Is that the yeah, name? yeah? Before Bon Scott. Yeah, right? he, he gave the blessing. He said if they're going to call it ACDC, if they're going to tour, that they they should make a new record to make it like officially ACDC. So well. well I'm wondering, as a guy who works in rock radio, mm-hmm. do you think new GNR material, maybe new Axel with ACDC material, could revive rock radio? And that I could see if they played it first on your station or something. Mm-hmm. That could be a bigger buzz than anything I have rem- I remember in a long time. I, I That would be great. I would love to see what, you know, again, if it was New Guns N' Roses material for my station, for WDHA, absolutely. I think I think they would play it. I think they would embrace it right away, you know. Uh, and you know, same thing with ACDC. I guess you have to give it a chance. You know, yeah. and then there's always going to be people that are closed off. You know, especially with ACDC. I think I think a lot of people are down on that. Which I I was, and and then I got tickets through a radio station I was working at, at the time, and I didn't know they would be like against the stage. So I I don't want to be biased and say that added to my experience, but. Everybody around me was so happy and blown away yeah. and dancing, and it just didn't care. They didn't care. Well, it was, it, it, and, he, and Axel was smiling the whole time. Yeah. It's like, you just get Botox before? What, what's wrong with your face? <laughs> you because, look happy. Because the pressure's not, even though you think the pressure's on him, in his, I think. It's not. It's not his his uh, his rodeo. Right, right, exactly. But And, one, and that reminds me of, um, remind, really quick of the, the that show that we saw at the, at the Continental sure. Arena. When they did Whole Lotta Rosie, you could feel like they all like, it was like a sigh of relief. And they just like. 
it was just back to the garage again. And they did a whole lot of Rosie. And they were just rocking out. And every guy just, like, went off into his own world. And Axel was happy as hell. So I think when he plays, like, other people's songs, he's a lot more relaxed than what he's doing his own. That's actually uh, quite a thought to, uh, to ponder. Are you pondering what I'm pondering, Pinky? I wanted to use that word today. Because uh, all the emotion and just the lyrics of these songs, I mean, I can't imagine after he sings This I Love, when it's really just focusing on his vocals, that mm-hmm. he's not exhausted emotionally after that. Right. So you may have a, a good point there, why they still do, and despite the fact that they're hits, that they still do Knockin' on Heaven's Door, uh, that, they, they, that they're still doing these covers. Yeah, uh, a lot well, of people love doing, to hear those. They're and... doing maybe that's oh, hmm, maybe that's why. I just thought about that's now. They're doing uh, they've been doing the Seeker, right? Yes, they're covering yes, the Seeker, yes. and now they're touring uh, or at least doing some shows with the Who. So. Maybe Axel comes out with with Daltrey cool. and they knock it out together, or maybe uh, yeah. Roger Daltrey and Pete Townsend do one in a million and just kind of do it. You know, you're no. not gonna get one. Uh, damn it! <laughs> if this is your bucket list <laughs> song, you're guess what? I know. Lyrics aside, uh, it's a great tune. It's a great tune. But we uh we do have to unfortunately wrap it well, up. I wanted to say one thing going back to the okay. rock radio thing. So, cause I, I didn't really get to finish that thought was all right. So I'm 30 years old. I still remember certain things. Like I remember K rock, for example, mm-hmm. debuting um, Radiohead's kid. A, right. and I remember them playing the entire album. I feel like if you're a 19 year old rock fan today, you never got to experience that. I'm hearing this for the first time on the radio and, it, and it's something really big. Like, I'm just thinking, can you imagine even whether it was serious or if it was a station like yours and they said, hey, we're going to play the first material from Slash and Axl Rose and Duff McKagan that you've heard in all these years right here on this station. I think it would be a really cool event. They should. They have like a listening party or something and just make it exclusive. It's one way of doing it. It also depends on the record company and how they want to market it. Because here's what, you know, and and this is something that with the band 10 Ton Mojo that we focused on as part of our marketing when the first album came out was, where do you get these songs out? And it's very hard for a rock band to get music out now, especially if you're not, you know, nobody knows of you. You've got a better chance, and, and sometimes bands do this, you know, the new song will be a 30-second clip at the end of, like, a show on HBO. Yes, yes, you yes. You know, and that's how, or a car commercial, you know, like, you know, the new the new uh, Chevy Camaro commercial yep. has the new Guns N' Roses song in it. And my, uh, that's how you can break a song these days now. Like my friends in uh, Midnight Mob here in the city, they just got a 30-second bit. I know those on, guys. Yeah, they're, they're amazing. <laughs> they're on, like, a WWE um pay-per-view yeah nice. exactly you know, those, entrance that's how music happens. yes right. entrance music for a wrestler or something like i think wwe has their own company that does that but yeah but um that's how you break a song now i'll tell you something it's even so crazier about how to break a song not in the rock genre but there's been articles going around this past week that like if kylie jenner has a rap song in the background on her snapchat suddenly that rapper like blows up I guess that's how you that, break the song now. I, that is Kylie a way. Jenner uses it on Snapchat. That is I a hate way. this planet. I just hate this planet. <laughs> really? That is a way to do it. I mean, with Ten Ton Mojo, Ten Ton Mojo got a song in a, um, we'd get a uh, Suzuki commercial. That's huge, Suzuki, though. Suzuki, like with the quads. So they got uh, they got one of their songs in that. That's why I think it's funny where if you're a new band that needs to do that, or if you're a band like Guns N' Roses and The Who, you are still heard in commercials today. Yeah. It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible that they're still doing it. Yeah, well, I mean, certain songs just get you hyped, and and companies hopefully think that'll make you want to buy their product. I mean, if I hear "Welcome to the Jungle" but the fact in a that commercial, they still have, I'm like, tuned quote, in. Air quote, have to do that or to to make money. I guess because I don't have oh, to. Oh, I got to tell you it's something. A great funny. Way, it's a great right. way of doing it, though. It's a it great is. way of making extra money. You uh, know, now because there's so many outlets now, so many ways to whether it's YouTube or Hulu or Netflix, so many different ways to hear or uh, watch commercials. Well, well, also look at it this way too, and I know we're we're going to wrap up. Take look for something that's on television that's going to have a captive audience. Game of Thrones. Let's just throw that out. I don't think they do this. I don't watch Game of Thrones. Well, because it's HBO, that might be different. But but if you have your new hit single song that you want to get out there into the universe, and you have that as the closing credits play, everybody's uh, going to lose their mind because sure. now you've got millions and millions of people focused on one thing, and that means millions and millions of people are going to hear that song for thirty seconds. Yep. All you need is a fraction of that to go. 
I like that. Can yep. you imagine if that's and they'll buy it. what Guns N' Roses had to do, even though they had to jump through a million hoops, so we all know that story. You know, uh, Appetite was out for almost a year, then they had yeah. to fight to put it on 2 a.m. in the morning on MTV. But that's imagine when I that. saw it. You know, 30 seconds of just, like, maybe the, the, the baseline of It's So Easy and how maybe that's how the next Guns N' Roses gets famous. It's unbelievable what you need to do in 2017. It I really was, was going to mention that um, I think I've, I've said this before on the show that the first real radio gig I had was Fangoria Radio on Sirius XM oh, with yeah. Dee Snyder. And I remember We're Not Gonna Take It was used in some women's, women's commercial. And at the yeah. time, <laughs> I think Dee Snyder was getting some crap. They were like, you're a sellout. Why are you using this? And I remember Dee on the show being like, he, he was like, the commercial is about vaginal dryness. <laughs> was like, who's not against vaginal dryness? <laughs> and so that was his explanation for it. He was like, why wouldn't I give them the song? Can't argue with so, that. Yeah. Well, that's true. I love it. I guess we'll leave it there. Yeah. <laughs> Vaginal dryness. <laughs> Until next time. <laughs> that's that's going to be the new model. We're going to make t-shirts of that. We should do that. Well, Jim, thank you so much. This is uh, our first time meeting. I know you and Ian have worked at Sirius before. Yeah. I, I, th- I probably saw you in the halls of Sirius with you and your beautiful uh, coiffed hair. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's a pleasure to, to meet you in person. Thank you very much. This was a lot of fun. I'm glad we finally got a chance to do this. Yeah, again. I've been saying. I know. Ian has been saying it for a while. So. And uh, we had your friend Raven on uh, a few yep. episodes ago who was awesome. So no, this is the this is cool, and thank you for everyone again for listening to Appetite for Distortion episode nineteen. Thanks for hanging in with us. Uh, plenty more episodes to come, more guests, more uh, stupid sound bites. But then, who was the guitar player for Guns N' Roses? One of our parents. <laughs> more and uh, yeah, leave a review on. Or I iTunes. was gonna. Well, no, I was gonna say leave a review on Apple Podcasts, which oh, is okay. what they're calling it now. It's no longer iTunes podcast. It's right. yeah, uh, Apple podcast. And also, uh, please subscribe also on uh, iHeartRadio so they know that uh, I'm putting their studios to good use. <laughs> so they know we're doing a good job. And uh, please, any feedback, whether uh, it's through an email, whether it's even an audio that I've suggested to some people, we can play it on, on the show so we can, we can hear you no matter where in the world that you are. So thank you so much for, again, uh, hanging out with us. Go check out 10 Ton Mojo, by yeah. the way. Yes. And so Oh, I- and follow Jim on Twitter at Jim. Rotolo. Anything else, my dear Ian? Yeah, follow us at the AFD show. Sounds good. So until next time, next episode, I don't know when, in the words of Axel Rose about Chinese democracy, I know you'll see it, but I don't know if soon is the word. You've been listening to the distorted minds of Brando and Scotto, dissecting all things Guns and Roses on Appetite for Distortion. Follow the guys on Twitter at the AFD show and on Facebook at facebook.com slash the AFD show. security, I'm going home.